In this video, let's learn about thread affinity. We have talked about thread affinity when we talk about semaphore and locks and monitor. At that time, we were saying that any lock that is acquired by a thread has to be released by the same thread that is thread affinity, whereas semaphore doesn't have a thread affinity concept. So a thread can acquire the semaphore and another thread can release it. But thread affinity concept is not limited to thread synchronization. Any resources that are used within a thread usually have thread affinity, which means that only the thread itself can access those resources. For example, we have this application is a Windows form application for demonstrating offloading long running tasks. And we created, remember we created two buttons to show different messages on a label. So these are the two buttons and we're showing the message on the label, right? So if we go to the, the code behind or the CS file here, we have the event handler. However, we created two separate threads and each thread is calling this. This has been working for our example, but if we set a breakpoint over here, if we run it in debug mode, we will see some exceptions. So let's run it and you will see exactly what I mean here. So click on the message one button and just wait for three seconds, I believe. Okay, so now you can see the message is first message. And if I just press on F10 to continue, immediately you see this cross thread operation not valid message here. Okay? And it says control label message accessed from a thread other than the thread it was created. See, this is thread affinity, which means that the label is created within the main thread, right? the UI thread. However, here is a function that is used within different thread. It's a background worker thread that is triggering this, and it's the background worker thread is trying to access a resource that is created within the main thread. And that's why it's complaining. Right? It cannot be like that why it was working at one time. Okay, so if I just run it without debug, it will be working. Why it's working at runtime, actually, I'm not too sure. I have been expecting the exception even at runtime. I think my assumption at runtime is that the Windows form, kind of like the framework, hides that type of exception on purpose, although I didn't find any documentation about this. So this is threat affinity problem. So in order to still access this label from a different thread, we need to use something that is called invoke. By calling the invoke method on the control, which is in this case the label, it kind of synchronizes context. Okay, so what I mean by that is that we have different contexts here. We have a uh, thread, which is a different thread than the main UI thread that owns this label. We need to kind of make these two threads become one when we try to access the label from a worker thread. So that's, that's what I mean by synchronization context. So we need to do something like this. Um, LBL message dot invoke. And then here you can see that it takes an action. For that, we can use a Lambda expression, right? And within that, we can move this message over. Alt and then use the arrow to move it and format it. So if we do it this way, then there will be no problem anymore. Because if we call the delegate through the invoke method, we're basically calling the delegate within the thread that the label was created in. I set a breakpoint and if I run it, now if I click on message one and just wait for three seconds, and then I'm going to do F10 and you can see that it passes through without any problems coming back into the first message, right? So using the invoke method is basically synchronizes the contact between the two threads. And you can see that the documentation says that I execute a specified delegate on the thread that owns the controls underlining window handle, right? It basically just synchronizes, right? just like what I mentioned. Another thing I want to point out is that it's better to use something like this. So if I go to label dot and you can see that I have this invoke require. So this is a boolean. What you can do is that you can check whether invoke is required or not. Okay, so if the invoke is required, then you can do 
you can use the invoke method otherwise you don't have to okay, so this takes the guesswork away you don't have to always be aware whether the invoke method needs to be used or not you can just do this and it will work for all the cases if this show message is called within the ui thread then this will be executed instead of using the invoke method so you can do this and still it's going to work for you no problem i can do message one it's not going to throw me any exception i'm going to do message two and it's going to work as well after five seconds see the change to message two all right so this is an example with windows form application i want to give you another example which is in espionage core blazer i know it could be a slightly complicated concept but it's going to help you to understand that the threat affinity is everywhere so i'm going to create a blazer web application i'm going to say blazer thread affinity and then interactive mode i select the server interactive mode interactivity location just keep it as global or just select global if it's uh, different and then click on create you don't have to worry about what this means i'm just creating a simple scenario so that i can uh, demonstrate that to you so this is a web application right and then i can go to components and go under pages here and go to home right, so this is the home page i want to add something to to the home page first of all I want to add two line break and then I'm going to create a button. So the type of the button is button and then get to a different line. And then over here, I'm going to say that the class is button and button primary. So this is from bootstrap. I'm going to just make the button look better. And then after that, I'm going to react to the click event by saying add on click and here is a delegate and i'm just say display time so the caption of the button i'm just going to say display time now the display time should be a delegate which needs to be created i'm going to create a code block over here and then i'm going to go ahead and create the display time method here once I do that, you can see the rescue line is gone. So I can go ahead and, and implement this display time functionality here. So what I can do is I have to display the time somewhere. And for that, I'm going to declare a variable to store the current time. So I'm going to say current time. And I'm going to initialize that to empty string. And when I click on the display time button, the current time needs to be assigned a time dot now dot to string and that's it right. so if i do it this way and run it if i click on the display time button nothing is happening well that's because we didn't do anything here we did have this current time but it's not displayed anywhere so what i can do is i can have another two line bricks and then over here I'm going to display my current time. Well, this is going to display the current time just above the button. And then I'm going to do how reload doesn't work for me. I know that. So I'm going to just restart the application. Coming back to this, click on the display time. So immediately you can see the time displayed right here. Right? And there's no problem with this. However, if I use a different thread for this, then you're going to see problems. So let's create a different thread. I'm going to say thread, thread equals new thread. And we need to provide a task to it. And to simplify this, I'm going to just use Lambda expression to have that. And we are going to say, uh, we're going to move this into it, right? And then if I do it this way, nothing is going to happen, actually. I want to show this to you. Let me add a little bit delay thread.sleep so we're gonna sleep for half a second and let's run it again all right we're going to click on display time and see nothing is happening well that's just because we're using a separate thread and the ui rendering has already finished before this line is executed 
Therefore, we need to do something special here. We need to say state has changed. Okay, so this is from the base class. You can see component base. So this, when I say state has changed, it will trigger the UI, which is the web page, to re-render. Right? And this will help us to display this current time, or kind of refresh the current time on the page. However, at this point, we're going to run into thread affinity problem. So let's uh, restart the application. Okay, and click on display time. Nothing is going on. And not only that, you can see that it says attempt to reconnect. So this means that something is happening. So if you go to F12, you can see all kinds of errors. So this is the developer tool in case you haven't worked with web application. Pressing F12 will bring up this tool, which is called the developer tool. And then under the console, you can see the error messages. It has all kinds of errors, but it doesn't really tell you what is going on here. This is really just because we are running into the threat affinity issue. Uh, so what this issue is really is that we are trying to call the state has changed method, which tries to re-render the UI. However, the UI should be re-rendered through the main thread. So there is this problem, the conflict. So same solution, you have to synchronize the two threads context. So in order to do that, we use the same thing, the invoke method. We're going to say base.invoke async. And then this will also take an action, right, which is a delegate. So we can just call this state as change method within the invoke method. And this will solve the problem because this just kind of synchronized the two threads context as one. Run the application again, come back, and click on display time. And now you can see that we have this new time. Now wait for a little bit and click on it again, and you can see the time refreshes. By showing you these two examples, you can see that we have the thread affinity issue, and we have to pay attention that we only access the resources that are created within the thread in itself. You cannot access it from a different thread unless you use the invoke method to synchronize the different contexts. And we are going to come back to thread affinity when we talk about async and the await keyword later in the course. Okay, that's everything I want to talk about in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.